Is high copper in the body something we should be worried about? Uh, what are your thoughts on vitamin A and possibly toxicity? Well, if you consume excessive amounts of vitamin A, um, it could become a problem. Uh, usually doesn't. Um, our livers are quite big and have great storage capacity. One thing about um, our livers, they can do, they can store two things really, really well in large amounts, and that's glucose, and that's been shown that people that have got a certain um, disease where they can't clear glucose out very well out of their liver, their liver just grows bigger and bigger, but it doesn't get sick. Um, so they can, so it's good, so it's got a very good glycogen storage capacity. One thing, the other thing that it's got is very good stable retinol ability to store retinol and any excess if you've got a good functioning gallbladder gets excreted out of the gallbladder so usually if you've got your serum um uh, you know like vitamin a goes up usually you'll see you know, like certain types of um enzymes liver enzymes going up that usually means there's a pre-existing condition there's a condition that is causing a problem copper is also usually excreted um, if you're actually consuming a carnivore diet and you're not um, overly consuming the body should excrete any excess because uh, you know again um, some through the kidneys and some and, uh, and f through the bile as well. Manganese again through the bile, primarily ninety percent can be excreted. So there's it depends on the mineral, which parts of the body it gets excreted. So if those parts are not working properly, are not healthy, yes, you could potentially get into toxic levels. That's a potential. You know, it's a bit like iron as well. Um, I'm less concerned about um, ferritin. People go, oh, about no, no. That's a safe storage. And some people can have very high ferritin and have like infections or um, be exposed to mold. Mold um, without knowing it can actually raise their ferritin levels. So a lot of different things, but it's safe. It just means fix that problem and it will normalize. Um, you know, it's transferritin that I get concerned. You know, so it's the transporter parts that if there are too many, why is it being used? What's downstream that's not working properly? So that that's where I get more concerned rather than some of this sort of other stuff that people get all um, upset about, um, which is usually just pretty much nonsense in that regard. Um, so, no, I don't worry about, uh, but I do not recommend people consume more than 10,000 IUs per day um they should try and stick to around look i'll give you an example there was a you know remember the study you probably don't know about this because you're probably more recent but i've actually discussed this on multiple occasions i've shown people there in 1991 there was a, a case study that was actually done in a nursing home in the u.s um on an old gentleman that he was 88 um, years old, outlived his both his parents. His mother died at 76. His dad died at 40, had no special genetics. Um, so he was the oldest in his family is um, still alive. And pretty much the only thing that he had, didn't have any health problems. His only thing that he had was he was a bit depressed. That's because he lost his wife. Understandable. He was, he was lonely, um, you know, so, but, you know, depressing, he hadn't given up on life, so to speak. So he wasn't like severely depressed. He just was unhappy. They call it depression. Back then, they called everything. Um, and uh, he pretty much consumed 25 eggs a day on average. That's a lot. That's about, you know, he was getting well over 7,000 you know, because sometimes he was doing up to 30 eggs, other times he was doing um, 24 eggs. And they were delivering them, and he would just munch on them all day. They hard-boiled eggs, and he would munch on He had an addiction to eggs. And he'd been doing that for decades. 
you know, and they were looking at the cholesterol because back then in the in the nineties it was the big fear of cholesterol. How is this man? He must have no special genetics. His parents didn't live long compared to him, so they he was like, this is an anomaly. They were scratching their head. This is pretty much and that's a, they did a case study and they left it at that they never did a follow-up which was unfortunate i would have loved to read the follow-up um but the guy was very robust lived very well and was consuming on average about you know around about the seven thousand um i use of vitamin a which is you know three thousand is considered the the max and uh, you know it's about we're talking about you know nearly nearly two and a half times not a problem whatsoever i do not encourage people to consume more than ten thousand i use let's put it that way i tend to consume around two thousand i use um you know from all the foods that i consume sometimes it can be a bit lower than that sometimes it can be a bit um, a bit higher than that if I have, you know, like 12 eggs and a few other things. So it depends on what I'm what I'm doing. But, you know, so, I mean, like yesterday I had two two omelettes type things. So, so it's really that sort of stuff. So, I mean, as long as you're not supplementing, that's the biggest problem where people are doing like, you know, 10,000 and oh, my coffee, I forgot my coffee. Damn, it's going cold. So, <clears throat> sorry. <coughs> now I choke myself. Fantastic. Ah, <clears throat> <coughs> oh, God Almighty. So, uh, flush my face as well. <laughs> if I die, just call someone. Uh, so pretty much, um, well, that's what happens with plants. I must have reacted to the coffee. <laughs> uh, caffeine, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't sort of buy the, the vitamin A toxicity issue. I think that's just crap, nonsense. It's overblown. But if you're doing like well over 10,000 I use continuously, that could become a problem, especially if you've got a lot of underlying issues and all that. So I don't recommend it. Um, I usually say to people, stay below that. I don't recommend people eating organ meats um, unless they've got genetics for them like I have, you know. Um, so that's another thing. And when you get older, the excretion rate of copper out of the bile um, can, be, um, can, can fall slightly. So you have less efficiency, especially with people like us, that haven't lived a tribal life to have you know things working pro properly um so i'm always reluctant to say to people consume these things even though there have been other people that have consumed much larger amounts and don't seem to have any problems so i'm not saying that it's going to be a problem for you but there can be a whole lot of underlying issues um, that can actually cause these problems of you know in terms of storage and clearance that that's a sort of, sort of stuff if you've got good gallbladder function and you haven't come from a vagunarized diet um a, a plant-based diet then you should yeah i do use that word rather than the other word the vegan word i usually vagoon vagunarized and that sort of stuff it's uh my sort of uh well way and it also is to reduce the amount of the propensity of the ai to to notice what i'm saying so it's part of that as well you know i've been recently demonetized again and you know, had another strike on the other channel <laughs> so yeah i let's say youtube finds me controversial for a number of reasons <laughs> <laughs> 